first set the eyelets were diagrammed. Notice these up in the corner. And in this case, because there's a post, this eyelet needs to be equal as though there was a post. Set your eyelets first. Then, after the eyelets are in, thread your cable starting with the retract two end, which is the back end. Go through one. Make sure your eyelets are set as diagram. They'll be called on to either be set horizontal or vertical. After the back side is corner is set and pulled through, start at the I always like it to where the underside coming across is the bottom, not where it's on top. That way the nose hook clamps on better. Two cable clamps on, or three if it calls for three, usually two or three, and thread it through the other end of your turnbuckle. slack of the cable try to position your turnbuckle to where it's right in the center have a nice needle nose handy in your back pocket ready to clip on and hold your cables while you put on the last two tighten the last cable clamps now I can tighten these clamps. Crisscross tighten, just like you put the lug nuts on a car. Double check this other side. We usually have this back side already assembled when it's shipped to you. Then before you tighten it, I like to cut the slack cable off. These you can pick up, it's about an 18 inch size for not very much money at uh, Harbor Freight or Home Depot. They're usually in the electrical department. They're not very expensive, 20, 25 bucks, but they'll cut a lot of cable. Leave about six inches of stub. One little quick snap and that thing's cut. Then apply your black tape, electrical tape, so the cable doesn't unravel on the stub end. And around both cables, pin it down nicely so you can put the decorative cover on it here in a second. Now these decorative covers go over the black tape. Ta-da! Put one on this side. Ta-da! Last thing is tighten it by hand to desired tension. I like 
to always put the needle nose on one end. Very, very important that you don't unravel the cable at the corners. So to do that, steady one end, hold here. The only thing to move is the center of the turnbuckle. You don't do this way that one of the corners will unravel and there will just be a th few threads of cable holding and when the wind blows it'll break your cable with the seesaw effect tighten it hand tight only you don't no need to do any torque down when the shade is installed oh this one will have a 15 foot length here 16 foot there will be about an inch and a half two inch sag in the middle if the proper tension the tension can be adjusted higher or lower as needed. Once that's installed, set the little stopper nut here so it won't come back. Same with this side. On so the fabric will hold a vice grip or a long screwdriver and some plastic under so it won't damage the fabric as I roll it out. And just clip in your shades, making sure the nose hook is the opposite end of the turnbuckle, which is on the retract two end. Clip it in. Come back here behind me, yeah. This shade has a little hang down balance on the back end, so when the shade's retracted, it doesn't hit against the stucco and wear out the fabric. This acts as a buffer for that. Some people like this on the other end as well for a little added sunblock or just ambiance, but totally an option, but pretty necessary on the backside usually. <laughs> This is the easiest way to grab onto that little protruding and maneuver your shape back and forth. Voila, look at that, a perfect fit. So one or two of them per connection and they are a different cable clamp so so as not to be harmful to the fabric should the fabric blow up and hit it so that's why they're called the flat clamps we're going to put two of them on this one <laughs> <laughs> 